God called me into ministry by this verse from Haggai 2:23. I will make you like my signet ring for I have chosen you declares the Lord Almighty As soon as this verse hit me I resisted his call in my life and then God continued to speak to me from John 20:21 saying again Jesus said Peace be with you as the Father has sent me I am sending you Since then the journey began with Jesus beloved ones of god uh today god has put in my heart um things to speak for you all and um the thing that god was speaking to me was about being affected or effective so as i was just you know like asking the lord on what is it that he was teaching me this season and what he would like to share with you all uh, he led me to the story of joseph and um, i'll just read uh, from genesis 41 32 so here is joseph he is uh, going uh, he's going to be presented before a king and uh, this is just as it is i'm just reading from the scripture portion on what happens here so genesis 41 32 and the dream was repeated to pharaoh twice because the thing is established by god and godly god will shortly bring it to pass from genesis 41 33 to 36 uh, he says i mean like this is joseph talking about the dream uh, now therefore let pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt let pharaoh do this let him appoint officers over the land to collect one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful plentiful years and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities then that food shall be as reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land may not perish during the famine so something that really brought to my attention while reading the scripture portion was joseph respond to the dream he answered by saying king do all these things so that the land may not perish during famine and uh, i just stuck there that the land may not perish during the time of famine and uh, i had this dialogue with with god and uh, you know he started asking me what was joseph's response to god's dream when he heard pharaoh because in the beginning in genesis 41:32 uh, joseph clearly discerns he says that the dream because the dream was repeated to pharaoh he says the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass so what was you know what was joseph respond to pharaoh's dream and uh, what was his attitude to the upcoming famine in the land so when something is approaching especially a crisis of famine what what's our attitude to that and uh, because it's very important like our attitude perspective and choice of action determines how famine will affect us i will repeat it again our attitude perspective choice of action determines how famine will affect us will the famine affect us or will we be effective irrespective of the famine so that depends on how we analyze the situation see famine comes famine will come trouble will come but perishing in the famine depends on us it doesn't depend on god if you look at the life of joseph joseph is hearing to a dream and uh, his response to the dream was way different than our response to the dream in military there is a saying you know if you train well during peace times you will bleed less during war time and uh, 
really I was amazed uh, as I was reflecting on Joseph's response to this dream. I was looking at the life of Joseph and it was like I kind of went into a flash and I started uh, seeing uh, Joseph's life and if you see, you know, he was like a man of dreams. He was his dad's favorite. Um, he had beautiful life. Uh, you know, when you, are go when you are your parents' favorite and, you know, you have the favor of your parents and if your parents are really, you know, well-to-do and stuff like that, you know you have an awesome life. And Joseph, starting, jo starting life of Joseph, he was an awesome, like he was a dream boy and things were going good. And uh, like one disaster of the other disaster, like his first his brothers sell him, uh, he goes as a slave from being parents like dad's favorite boy to being a slave somewhere and even there he's uh, you know what do you say he's falsely accused he's blamed for something that he didn't do he's again put in prison and even in prison uh, his friends forget him when they get the promotion and when they move on in life when they're released from the jail nobody uh, he's un unheard of for many many years to come but how was joseph responding and uh, what was in Joseph uh, to respond the way that he responded? And as I was, you know, <clears throat> beginning to think on all this, what, what was it, you know, that made, Joseph, uh, uh, that made Joseph really stand out? And for me, as I reflected on it, I felt God was saying that, you know, Joseph guarded his heart. And uh, when you guard your heart, you live in the present. Uh, if you see if like example Joseph is standing before a king he had nothing good going on up until this time and here he is hearing the dream of a king about famine of how everybody is going to perish and stuff like that and if he didn't guard his heart and if he was resenting if he was bitter and if he was in, if he was in the past you know if he was so down he, if he was disappointed what would have his response be to the king? He would have just, you know, like bet his head, oh, you know, stuff like that. Like imagine if you if you go through something and then you hear one disaster of the, oh, what's your, like, it's enough, you know, like, okay, good. All my suffering is coming to end. Famine is coming and I'm going to die, you know. That's how, uh, that's how hopeless we'll feel when our heart is not guarded. Obviously, when our heart is not guarded, we, if we are in resentment, if we are in bitterness, uh, number one, <clears throat> we don't live in the present. And uh, Joseph, because his heart was guarded, he had the right perspective. And he was able to be in the moment when King presented something, he understood that this was an opportunity uh, for himself. See, when, you, when your heart is guarded, you're open to opportunities because you live in the moment. See, if you're not guarded, if, if you're not living in the moment, uh, opportunity will come, but it will kind of pass you by. Like it is there, but you're not there to grab it because you're somewhere like you know you're there but you're in a different world you're not <clears throat> you're not looking at the door that's open for you so for me i said uh, the best way <clears throat> mahima uh, when a famine hits you is to guard your heart when crisis hit you is to guard your heart because how you guard your heart will determine the attitude that you have towards a crisis towards a famine and that will determine whether you're living in the present or you're just absent in the present. And if you're living in the present, every problem, there is an opportunity to provide solution for. And uh, it's beautiful because my husband always has this attitude. Whenever there are like in office, when there's more problem, he's very cheerful because for him, there is more, uh, more uh, things to solve, you know, like, so his job is on. He, he has job, you know, if there are problems to solve. So he doesn't look at that as a headache, but for him, it's like, wow, I have an opportunity to solve the problem. I, ha I have an opportunity to shine brighter. So I think in the spiritual realm also, it's like that uh, when a crisis hits us, when something happens, when something unexpected happens, when disappointment hits us, and when we are accused or when you are blamed or when something like when disaster hits us, number one is to guard our heart. When we guard our heart, we live in the present. When we live in the present, we are able to seize the opportunity. We are able to see the open door that is set before us. And um, and I, I was amazed at Joseph, the ability to in not only interpret the dream, but the ability to solve uh, whatever was happening to the upcoming situation like he was able to provide a solution to the king on what to do when the famine was there and for me that's God's wisdom and I felt you know if our heart is not guarded 
we won't be in a position to even access the wisdom of God because a heart that is full of anxiety, a heart that is full of resentment, a heart that is full of bitterness, a heart that is full of rage, anger or hatred just uh, has n does not have in, in, it, in itself the capacity to reach out for, uh, for wisdom. And when our heart is guarded, we are more at peace. Uh, have you ever wondered in life when you make a decision out of anxiety, out of fear, it's always it's always like a mishap happens, but when you are at peace and you make a decision, it really, uh, it really does good. So uh, for me, that's what God was saying, Mahima, when you guard your heart, when you have the right perspective of life, when you have the right attitude, and when you live in the present and you're not absent when the moment is coming, when the opportunity is, is coming your way, when you're not absent, when you're in the moment, you are there to seize the opportunity, you're, you're there to grab the opportunity, and you also have the ability to access the wisdom of God. So that's that's so amazing for me. That really spoke to my heart. And uh, so I, f I feel like, you know, this is what I personally felt God speaking to me that uh, in crisis, we don't have to be affected by the storms of life. We don't have to be perish, perish. We don't have to perish. We can be effective irrespective of the famine that's I have before us and above all in the famine uh, we can thrive and we can access the wisdom of God so that we won't perish and uh, even as I was thinking to all this you know like imagine like if you if you're in a very very dark room like there is a complete darkness around it doesn't take like huge thousand bulb or whatever light to like lighten the entire area when it's like pitch dark it's just a small like small candle like a small light that's sufficient to lighten the place. You know, when we are in the thick of crisis, when we are in the eye of storm, or you know, when, when situation is really, really beyond our means, it's just a small touch of God. It's just that small hand of God, the small gesture of God that's enough to solve everything. But the thing is, we need to be present when, the, when God is saving us. We need to be present to be able to access the wisdom of God. And we need to be present to co-partner, co-labor, and you know, just co-work with God. And he loves, I know there's, see, the way in which I see Bible a lot, yes, God can do so many things irrespective of us or despite of us. But God, in his greatness, in his goodness, he always likes to partner with us. He always likes to co-labor with us. With us. You know, it's like he likes to be our colleague, you know, he likes to be our partner. And that is his goodness. So with that comes responsibility also to do something on our end and that is to guard our heart that is to live in the moment uh, that is to be at peace so that we can access the wisdom of god and this really blessed me and this really spoke to my heart and uh, i felt you know like this was awesome and i just felt like sharing what god has been speaking to me i hope this small thing has blessed you all and you know i just have a small prayer precious heavenly father thank you for speaking to us through your word thank you lord that during famine we don't have to perish it's not your heart that we perish during famine lord that we should not be affected lord but irrespective of it we can be effective in the midst of storms when we guard our hearts when we are at peace and when we are in the moment when we are living in the moment we are there to grab the opportunity when our heart is guarded by the peace of god Lord, we have the access, we have the ability to access the wisdom of God so that we can not only survive during the famine, but we can thrive during the famine. Thank you for your great love for us, Lord. The dream of Nebuchadnezzar, Lord, reveals your heart, Lord, that you're not a God of destruction, but you're a God who loves your children, that you would like them to co-partner with you so that, Lord, we can thrive during the famine. Famine, no famine, you are our source. And uh, you always have a way to help us push forward in all seasons of our life because you are our source of wisdom. You are our source of everything. Thank you for this precious lesson, Lord. I pray every uh, person who is tuned to this voice, Lord, got something from you today. Got a principle in life, Lord, where they can apply and where they can thrive, where I can thrive. Thank you for speaking to my heart and thank you for speaking to every person's heart who is tuned to this voice. Thank you for blessing this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hey guys, thank you so much for watching me. And this has immensely blessed me. And uh, I know that everyone who is tuned to this voice, 
the voice of God is going to be immensely blessed. So thank you guys. Stay blessed. Have a blessed week. God bless you.